This is a reframed 360 video of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. This is that same video, but edited in the way I'm about to show you. I'm not using AI upscaling software. I didn't use any sharpening filters and it didn't cost a cent to do this. And if you stay to the end, you'll practically guarantee that all of your videos end up like the one on the right and not the one on the left. Today's video is about the single biggest factor that affects the final video quality of your reframed 360 videos and that is how you edit your videos. Follow the wrong workflow and your 5.7k footage will be reduced to looking like it was shot with a camcorder from the 90s. Follow the right workflow and your footage will look much more like HD to even 4k after reframing. And the key workflow decision you'll need to make is whether you edit your videos on mobile or desktop. These two workflows will produce dramatically different results which is why you need to be very specific about which content Content you edit where. So which workflow should you choose? Well, each has its pros and cons. With a desktop workflow, you'll need to have Insta360 Studio installed on your computer and manually insert your SD card to import the footage. With the mobile app, you can edit and reframe your videos wirelessly anywhere using a phone or tablet. A great feature of both workflows is that you can trim and reframe your shots before you download them to save wasting precious storage space on unused footage. The speed of downloading and stitching, however, is faster on desktop since the SD card is inserted directly and not slowed down by a wireless transfer. It will also be faster to stitch, edit, and reframe on desktop since computers usually have a faster CPU and GPU than phones, which will speed things up drastically, especially with really long clips. The actual process of reframing 360 videos is easy with both methods. However, using a desktop with a bigger screen allows for easier shot movement with a mouse compared to using using your fingers on a smaller phone screen. Despite this, both methods can achieve very similar results, except with the tiny planet effect. For some reason, with regular 16 by nine videos, you can zoom out much further on desktop than you can on mobile. If you like the catchy Insta360 shot lab effects, then currently the only way to access them is through the mobile app. These are fantastic and definitely worth a go. I'm not sure why they haven't added these to the desktop software yet, but they haven't. Once you're done reframing, you'll find find many more sharing options within the mobile app if you're looking to share directly to social media or Google Street View. With the desktop software, you can only export as either a reframed or a 360 video, which you then have to manually upload to other platforms. The final and potentially biggest factor in this comparison is export quality. No matter how fast or slow your workflow may be, if the end result is poor quality, then the few minutes you saved may be at the expense of your entire video. With the Insta360 mobile app, export quality is pretty limited due to smartphone CPU limitations, which cap out the quality around 1080p, 30 FPS with 125 megabits a second bitrate using the H.264 codec. You also won't be able to export full 360 videos any higher than 4K, even if it was shot at a higher resolution like 5.7K. With Insta360 Studio, however, you can export both reframed 360 videos and equirectangular 360 videos at custom sizes such as 5.7K and even 8K with the H.265 or ProRes 422 codec at up to 200 megabits a second. Now this won't magically upscale your video quality to those resolutions, but it will produce far greater video quality than mobile exports and also save you having to resize it later when using the footage within higher resolution editing timelines. Of all the pros and cons, video quality is potentially the number one factor to consider since with reframing 360 videos, it already reduces is the quality, which is why you want to retain as much as you possibly can with your export settings. And there's no question that the desktop software has far more options than the mobile app. So for any kind of professional presentation, even on a YouTube channel, I would recommend using the desktop workflow with Insta360 Studio so you can know you got the best quality possible out of your footage. And don't worry, you still can use the mobile app since it is good for quick edits and shot lab effects that you can do on the fly and upload to social media on your phone since you often don't need maximum quality for basic social media posts and Instagram stories. If this one tip alone improves your 360 videos forever, then it's really nothing compared to what I'm about to release in my upcoming 360 video course coming in mid 23, which will cover all of my best shooting and editing workflows for high quality reframed 360 videos. You can join the waitlist for that by following the link below. And if you're not sure which Insta360 camera to buy, or if you should buy another brand completely, 
then check out this video here to get my full recommendations of the latest and greatest 360 cameras you should consider buying right now.